The following podcast contains strong language, like what the actual fuck. Mr. Perkins is a prick. 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 All day long. How is that crass? How is that crass? Scarecrow Festival is like the most important day of the year. Cow? This is just ridiculous. What the actual fuck? Hey, what the actual fuckers, and welcome to WTAF of This Country podcast. First of all, let me introduce my co host. He's the man with the hostest. He's the man with the mostest. He's the man with the moistest, hostest, toastest. It's <laughs> Neil. <laughs> And I didn't even write that one. That was off the top of my head. Ah, oh, there you go. The moistest, though, doesn't sound too pleasant. But so, I'll take it. I'll take it, you know. All right. But I'll tell you what. A lot of people don't like that word moist, do they? No. Why? No. I, I really don't know. It's one of... It's... Yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those words. A lot of people find it cringy, I think the word is. that When they hear it, they go, ooh. But I don't know it, why. Because, like, a moist cake sounds good, doesn't it? Or moist chunks. I mean, moist you, chunk. Yeah, but that's more dog food, isn't it? Yeah, I, well, <laughs> <laughs> but you can't get two better words than moist chunks. Chunks is good. Chunks is... A, some of, some words are like really, really pleasant to say, aren't they? I always think the word plinth is one. That's a really nice word to say. Plinth. And some words are just horrible, like... Well, moist, I suppose, is one, isn't it? No, I like the word moist. Yeah, but we're, you're not in the majority. I, it doesn't bother me so much. Until somebody says you're moist, and then that's <laughs> how does that work? It depends on what situation it is. Sometimes and who it is. Yeah. Sometimes it's quite handy. <laughs> You'd have to be very it? careful who you said that to. <laughs> Hello, you're very moist. <laughs> uh, I think you have to you have to know somebody a certain amount of time before yeah. you can say something like that. Uh, oh um, bollocks! I never pressed record on the bloody camera, did I? <laughs> Oh no! Did you uh, want to start again? No, 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 because that's golden. Let me just uh, explain. I'm doing a little behind the scenes thing just for our Patreoners. So the whole, I was going to record the whole, hey, what the actual fuckers? And we're talking about moist, and I never pressed. See, I was too busy pressing record on my Zoom that I forgot to press record on there. See, I'm telling uh, you now, if you're a, a, a podcaster it's the bane of your life press record and press save so i've fucked up straight away so there you go no it's all good it's uh, all good they'll they'll me. get it sometime at some stage they'll at see s- at some stage okay so all of this is just irrelevant because we're here to do series three episode four of this country our recap Absolutely. And They're coming in thick and fast. <laughs> <laughs> they are. I mean, we've said a million times that we've strung this country out as by as thin as it'll go. You know, every time we've done the recaps in the seasons, it's always been, you know, we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six each week. Yeah. We've really strung this out, haven't we? I mean, I know it's been because of lockdown and we've had some great guests. That's the reason, isn't it? I you mean, it's COVID has upset everything. Plus, we, uh, initially, we were thinking we were trying to st- stretch this out so it would go on our, to our live show. The live show got ex- obviously delayed again. So it is what it is, isn't it? It's not on purpose. It's not on purpose. Um, but the thing is... And let me take you back now. Let me take you back, if you can remember, back to pre-COVID days. The 9th of March, the 9th of March 2020, which almost seems like a a whole different decade. It does, it really does. An eternity ago. Indeed, when all we had to worry about was Trump and Brexit. The simpler Mm. times. (laughs) (laughs) The simpler times. When you could walk into a pub and spit in someone's face if you wanted to (laughs) (laughs) no one not so much spit in their face but but you can sneeze no one would care no one would care you know Uh, they they might say don't do that but no one would recoil in horror 
and ha- head for the hand sanitizer in those days. And then end up having 14 days of self-isolation <laughs> exactly. because of it. Exactly. Unless you're a footballer or a member of parliament. Anyway, let's, um, <laughs> let's go. We're going to start talking about Curtin's half brother. And the one thing about this episode, um, we've got two main storylines. Yes. Episode. So this could quite easily have been called Mandy's book club. Yeah, or just book club. Yeah, or just book club. It could have quite easily been called that. But anyway, 9th of March, twenty twenty, and we start with the usual opening scenes of fields and shit. <laughs> fields uh, and shit. Fields, which <laughs> I, 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 technically I'm right because I'm sure there's fertilizer on those fields. Farmers' fields, country goodness, covered in shites. Yes. <laughs> um, and we are greeted by Kerry in her Uncle Fester gear. So let's have a little listen to what uh, Kerry's wearing, shall we? And we're greeted by another new ca- character as well. Suit, X window display, Moss Bros, thirty pounds. Shirt, Burton sale, eight pounds. Tie, Moss Bros rental, one pound a day, one pound. Shoes, Cats Protection League, two pounds. Looking a million dollars at a funeral, absolutely I priceless. Him what you lot have done to this village you should be ashamed of yourselves well the surprise person just going back before we talk about the pixelated celebrity there um her suit kerry wearing a suit now she wore a suit when she went into business didn't she yeah she likes a suit she dresses as a man mainly do you think she's like asexual she doesn't see herself as a female Genuine question, because she always dresses very like a boy, doesn't she? She wants to be one of the boys. She wants to... She plays football. Mm. Now, I'm not saying, obviously, that's a boy's thing. I'm just saying that it's... um, No, I'm going to get myself in trouble if I go down that route. I I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's it's quite quite weird, isn't it? You know, do you think she's... I mean, apart from being a child, do you think she's ever worn a, a dress or a skirt in adult life? Not that she should, but do you think she has? I I don't... No, I don't know. I I don't think there would be any reason why she would. No. Because I don't think she's... um, Well... I mean, look, later on in the episode, we see Kerry as a youngster, Uh, don't we? Yeah. yeah. And she's pretty much wearing the same, you know, a, a a football shirt and tracky bottoms. So it looks like that that's what she's worn all her life. Mm. And I don't think that unless, well, look, even at, let's say Grease Night, she decides to just wear a shirt and exactly and, Andy Ford and, and it. Yeah, she she doesn't decide that she wants to dress up in any way. If she went to a really nice party, what what would she dress at? Who knows? Mm. I don't. I don't think it would be. I think she would just go dressed in a shell tracky. suit and yeah, tracky bottoms and and maybe a nicer t-shirt maybe she gets a design from elton john who loves a tracksuit doesn't he oh, he, a shell does. Suit. he does love a tracksuit and he loves football he does so oh. you know there's Kindred a lot of similarities spirits. yeah now curtains nan we've discussed it so many times the more and more it, it's tilda swinton i don't it care is. what anybody else says I had, I really analysed this when I watched this again earlier, really analysed it, and I thought, okay, and then I pulled up pictures of Tilda Swinton on my phone <laughs> from Google. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Right. And, um, yeah, even the body shape. If you look, the body shape is near on identical. And then when she aged herself up for the film Suspiria, you know, the remake, damn, you you could see curtains now. It is Tilda Swinton. I'm sorry, it is. Yeah, I because ca- I, I cannot see anybody else, and even just by looking at it, when you squint, when it's pixelated, yeah, and just the kept. Ca- the- I'm going to go. The cadence of a voice. Mm. There you go. Do you like that? The cadence. I did. That was a big word. Voice. Thank you very much. Um, it's it's definitely Tilda Swinton, and I don't care again what. Simon Mayhew Archer says, or Tom, uh, George, or any of the other ones that say that they that it's what they say it was Australian, or yeah, that, uh, I think they're just putting you off the 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 With thing. Scent. And the fact that that Daisy was in David Copperfield with with her as well yeah just cements the fact for me. It's it is it it is her. It is yeah. Um, 
I love the fact that she mentions like the father brain lot, Mark Williams. Um, and Curtin comes out horrified that Nan is mouthing off. Now the thing that got me is that he, when he comes out, he's like got his collar up. Yeah. Cause he's obviously his he's doing his time and he looks like a Dickens character. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I was wondering like in, in his collar and dark suit, like something out of, um, out of the, a Christmas carol, you know, he's like, Bob, or Bob Scratch Bob it. Scratch it. And I thought, is that is a it clue? not Scratch it? Is it's it? It's Scratch it. Scratch it. <laughs> I thought, is that is that supposed to be like a little subliminal clue? Maybe. Is it, maybe. You know, I mean, we, we know we know that they've been that clever before. With like the they had the guy, the one of the um, nerds was dressed in like Columbine. That's ice, right. Which yeah. they, but they did. You know, Daisy did confirm to us that that was on purpose. So those little things, I think. Uh, mm. That they're not sometimes are not done by accident. They're done now on purpose. But it's when Curtin speaks to his grand when he comes to get her, his nan when he comes to get her back in. Actually, is one of the, some of the funniest things <laughs> said. Because <laughs> you better get in before the bath bomb dissolves. <laughs> Just yeah. made me laugh. That and line. that that to me is a classic this country line. Mm. That is a classic this country line. They take something that's quite banal and an everyday thing and the way they put it into a sentence yeah is just uh, for me is like okay, another good word quintessential this country i don't know what i've had today to come up with these words you've had your wheat bix i don't know what's going on tv's um, for nitwits <laughs> indeed <laughs> kerry says you won't be able to use that as she uh, doesn't want to be in the dock and it's TV for nitwits and Cleonis. so we get I just great line isn't it <laughs> we, yeah we get a bit more of the story of Curtin's mysterious family tree now mm. his half brother Ray has passed away and he didn't know him very well Curtin and Ray had the same dad Marshall Mucklow Marshall Mucklow m and M. I, I was going to say I'm wondering whether that is uh, a nod to Eminem. Well, it's what I thought straight away when they said it. I've even made a note of it in my notes. <laughs> oh, did you? Because <laughs> yeah. again, Marshall's not a particularly. Um, it's oh, not oh, a British uh, name. British name, no. really, is it? It's more of an American sort of name. Now he died when Curtin was young, and had Ray when he was twenty, and had Kurt when he was in his fifties, and the same age as Tina Turner. Yeah. Um, and he couldn't but couldn't move like Tina Turner well he had polio try dancing when your knees are back to front <laughs> who <laughs> knew polio <laughs> did that to people it's agony <laughs> it's agony now, now isn't that what um, Ian Jury had was yeah. polio yeah right. yeah he did he suffered with it I think it was all was it one side mainly that he was affected with Right. Uh, obviously, yeah, he certainly did, bless him. And that's what, as kids, isn't that one of the, like, the injections you used to get was from... Wasn't it? Uh, no, polio's the drop on the tongue with the sugar cube when oh, we were little. It? Yeah, obviously do they, they don't do, do that? that. No, you're not allowed sugar now. Sugar's the devil's semen. <laughs> <laughs> You've got oh my god i need to give up on the devil's yeah. semen then well i'm finding oh, it I difficult have, myself but... i have far too much devil's semen every day but no they don't i have be... it on my cornflakes <laughs> i have it in my tea <laughs> i have this devil's semen everywhere but no basically oh it was god. a big no-no to give her a, a sugar cube nowadays to kids is really really frowned upon apparently all oh, right okay they don't know what they're missing, do they? That horrible tasting <laughs> liquid on your tongue to have the joys of a sugar cube. Well, we need to start giving, giving out the information that kids, <laughs> you need to start get out, taking loads of devil semen. <laughs> semen unless, yeah. and let's see how, how far you get with that, Neil, shall we? <laughs> okay, it, huh? yeah. Reverend Seaton then says that he didn't actually know Ray, uh, but heard that he was a hard-working man by all accounts. And the Mucklows will give him the send-off he deserves. And then we see, well, oh, I'm assuming is um, members of the Mucklow family. Well, that's what I assumed, and probably people he worked with as well. Yeah, but they, they all have a type by the looks of it, don't they? The Mucklow yeah. family. They're all... Um, Bold. Well, he says that they're a sturdy bunch, but they're all quite sort of heavy and, yeah, so, and, and bold. I'm not, I don't know why I didn't get a call. 
I honestly don't know <laughs> why I didn't get a call to be I, an extra. I, well, you should have, but the problem was you just weren't quite tall enough, pal. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> that Sorry. was the, re- that was that the was reason. reason. I, I was big enough and bold enough, just wasn't as tall as tall. I needed to be. You see, um, I wasn't bold enough. That's what happened to me. Oh, uh, God damn these curse follicles. The, he cursed these too many follicles. Yes. Um, things happen for a reason, Kerry says. Uh, the wake is at the keepers and they have a new punch ball machine. And uh, Curtin wonders uh, what that has to do with anything. But Kerry likes to shout out in front of everybody that the, 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 the Lord works in a mysterious way. Isn't that right, Vicar? <laughs> and uh, the Vicar... It doesn't know what context he's talking about, but just agrees because I think it's just easier. Uh, easier we had a lovely agree. that self satisfaction on Kerry's face when he agrees with her. She's got that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm right. I'm right. Yeah. Okay, so we uh, we then move on to the keepers, and we're at the wake, and the food and drink is flowing as the punch ball machine is a great success. Ray's work colleague Clive Wilson says a few words. Now the thing is, like they've got the. Um, when you go to a funeral, I can't remember, but it said Ray's name, Ray Mucklow, and then a picture, and then it said deceased next to Now, surely that's self-explanatory because he's going to yeah. be deceased. That isn't what's normally on the... the not, that I, not that I'm aware. It's just usually a picture of the person, the date when they were born to the date they died, yeah. isn't I it? I just thought it was funny that in, in brackets it says deceased. <laughs> like, like, they're just letting you know that that's, that's why we're here to celebrate. Maybe they had extra characters they had to use that they paid for. Maybe, maybe. But 42 years of excellent service till he retired. Uh, you can see that um, uh, Clive is struggling to say anything of note about somebody that he hardly knew. Um, and he says, if you remember Ray, like I remember Ray, you'll remember him wearing his overalls, eating his lunch at his workspace. And Curtin is just looking quizzically all the time through yeah. this. Uh, yeah, it's quite funny acting from uh, Charlie on this bit. Yeah. So this is uh, some more that, uh, the more words of wisdom that Clive had. He'd always say things like, uh, morning and see you tomorrow. Well, Fridays when he would say, see you on Monday. <laughs> it's the bloke in the background yawning as well. There's, there's the bloke in the background yawning. And also the, the horse plate that's on the back, there's a really weird little bit where the guy that um, looks a bit like Tom Jones <laughs> with the beard and the, that's behind the straightens the plate. He does. And I don't know if that was meant to happen or whether it's just the, the fact that I was going to say, they were probably given directive to um, look bored, fiddle, do something yeah. that shows you're bored. And he probably just, that, that's what he did. He thought, oh, yeah, there's a plate, I'll straighten it. <laughs> yeah, because as much as there are some really funny moments in this, and it's like every episode of this country, I know, but, but it got me thinking, and I don't know again whether it's my age and that, it's like, how sad is this man's life that it never really amounted to anything? to the fact that nobody has anything good to say about him. Nobody has anything bad to say about him, but nobody has anything of note to say about him. And so much so that even somebody there who's supposed to be sort of like, not bigging him up is not the right thing, but trying to think of some kind of anecdote to say it is wake, that even the people there that are supposed to be celebrating his life can't even be bothered to listen enough so that they are, they are then drawn to this plate that is like mm. skew with. <laughs> that's the thing that gets me yeah it's just uh, he's one of those non-entities there are always people like that and that i always think to myself i bet they've got stories that they could tell but they're not that sort of person that would tell you they just keep themselves to themselves not very into people and that's what ray uh, ray was wasn't he he was or one of find, those yeah or you find out that he's a millionaire and, yeah. he never, and he never told anybody and all he wanted to do was go to work come home Go to work, come home. Mm. Uh, so they have a toast and a small, small moment of silence that is shattered as Martin punches the shit out of the punch ball machine, causing a cascade of lights and music. Martin wheels away, giving high fives uh, and a congratulatory sniff of victory. I love that. It's, it's that sort of like, yeah, I'm hard, I am. I just yeah. done it. 
<laughs> but Curtin looks horrified, and Kerry just looks interested. She's trying to strain her neck to see who it was that mm. uh, who it was that did it. So back to Kerry's, and Curtin just can't believe the speech. Curtin uh, asked Ray what he was like. Sweet, mellow, nutty. No, sorry, Curtin. There wasn't. Curtin asked Clive about Ray, what he liked about Ray, and that he was sweet, mellow, and nutty. And he was actually reading the description of the guest tale. <laughs> <laughs> Some clever writing there, that is. Oh, dear. And Some Kerry, clever writing. Kerry thinks that Curtin is talking to her, um, and he sort of scolds her by saying, you need to get your head out of the books, reading your life away. I know. Which I know. That- we finally see Kerry doing something educational. Yeah. And she's criticised for it. Yeah, and it's a nice little segue. This then moves us on to the book club yep and we are introduced to the book club and we hear kaylee reading it so it's nice to see celeste string back as kaylee uh celeste we still would love to chat to you on the podcast so please uh, call us email us or just send us a postcard <laughs> or a pigeon or a pigeon uh kerry says that she's been getting into books and the vicar got her to join uh, his book club she is talking about vampire diaries, saying that when she read it, she genuinely felt like she was reading a diary of a vampire. The vicar is delighted that Kerry has come to the book club and cleared all of Jacob's old room out and found a load of Goosebumps books and gave them to Kerry. Now, have you read Goosebumps books? I've never read a Goosebumps. I, I think they passed me by. I'm not of the generation when they were released for us. Right. When I was a bit older. Did you? Have you? No, because I'm not a book reader uh, really i'm I'm just i'm just not um but i noticed that when he says that that he obviously gave the books to kerry he has that smug look on his face again now i mean if you remember the last recap we did of cynthia mm. where Curtin was sort of saying you know he loves this he loves the fact that he can sort of help people and 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 play the angel kind of thing and yeah. i was sort of getting on Curtin's side of it thinking yeah he's doing it for self-gratification it almost felt a little bit like that again and I think, do you I'm, think? I, I didn't think notice I'm, it. Well, I think I'm being a bit hard on the vicar, but I do think that maybe there's part of me that thinks that's true, and there's part of me that's thinking, "Hey, I can't. Well, how can I be nasty to the vicar? Because he is like the nicest person in the world. He certainly is. He certainly is. Right. So he also says um, a lady called Margaret used to run the book club, um, but sounds a little sinister as he says it became a bit of a closed shop and she's moved on. He's running it now and he's opened it out for anyone to be able to join. I think there's a lot more of a dark story behind that. What Margaret, maybe she turned it into her own personal club. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'm, I'm no, I think, I, I think, I think more it's that, that the vicar, see, I'm, starting to paint the vicar as a bit more of an evil sod than he actually makes out. Oh, you think he ousted her? Yeah, well, he just sort of very nonchalantly, nonchalantly, say another word, Mm. uh, says she's moved on. There's no, there's no saying how did she move out of the village? Did she, has she been moved on by some other means? Has he like got some of the church heavies to like, you know, old parsnip pubes flinging away dig a dig a fresh grave which all of a sudden is filled in one night and then all of a sudden the book club is opened up for everybody Uh, i think you're reading a lot more (laughs) into this than i ever saw (laughs) coincidence or something a lot more sinister wow there's a new series there the dark stories of reverend francis yes it'd be like midsummer murders all over there you go so at book club, he says that uh, Colin has suggested the next book, Jungle Book. He asks if Colin would like to say something, but he refuses twice. He looks very coy and shy, doesn't he? Very childlike when he, he's asked. He is. He is. Well, he doesn't like to do anything, does he, by the, by the looks of it? Yeah. Uh, so at the vicar's office, uh, he asks Curtin how he's doing. Uh, Curtin says that the wake was an absolute joke. People were more interested in the power punch machine. And Curtin went round with a condolence book and Martin signed it R.I.P. Ray. No, Roy. Roy. <laughs> Roy. Ray. <laughs> Roy. <laughs> which would have been right. Uh, Roy. Uh, which isn't bad for Martin considering he just signed M for his own daughter's <laughs> birthday card. So, I mean, quit while you're ahead with Martin, I think. I think so. 
he was too busy high fiving and congratulating himself. Yeah, too busy on the punch bag. Yeah. So Curtin wonders how someone's life can be so meaningless. He'll be forgotten like Flat Eric. Who's Flat Eric? Says the vicar. Exactly. Now this is it's one a of great the pun, isn't it? It's a great bring back because we'd it, all forgotten Flat Eric. It is, but this is also one of the ones. If you look at the bloopers, this was one of the ones that they really had trouble um getting through because every time they mentioned flat eric they both laughed and they um <laughs> the vicar the vicar kept saying right i think kept saying roy instead of ray and uh yeah they had a lot of trouble with that it's a great blooper i highly recommend it. it's a great bloopers all round on this series yeah, so if you is. haven't seen them do check them out so curtain says he hardly knew ray so the vicar says well it's a good opportunity to find out about his half brother so Kerry and Curtin are walking up past Mandy's house and then Kerry comes up with something that I want to try. I made up my own McDonald's burger. Yeah. We're combining two burgers. Yeah. It's called Air Land and Sea, so it's a fillet of fish yeah. burger with um, a chicken burger. Yeah. Oh, so I'm assuming, I mean, she never got to finish the actual thing. No. I'm assuming that that then goes into a beef a burger yeah, a or quarter, a hamburger. A quarter pounder. So, so a quarter pounder with a fillet of fish and a chicken burger. I've never had a fillet of fish. Oh, they're lovely. Are they? They're literally like three mouthfuls and gone. Well, they are with me. Um, but a, a good, uh, it's a good chaser. <laughs> right it's your fish. appetizer yeah you have you, you have like your main meal so you have like yeah. your, bur your burger and chips and then you have just have a, have a little cheeky fillet of fish on the side oh i'll try one i will i usually just have an extra cheeseburger no to... no no they're they I'm, I'm telling you and i will say that for our patreon viewers i'm gonna try one of those land air and sea burgers i'm gonna i'm gonna make one i'm gonna get one and I'm going to eat it for a, like a video for our Patreon. Um, Ooh, sounds Patreon, good to me. A Patreon peepers. I'm going to do that. I don't know when, but I'm so going to. So, do you just take the 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 meat out and put yeah. it in the bun? I would say have the burger as your base. So, say get a quarter pounder. Yeah. Take the top off. Put the fillet of fish. Scrape yeah. all the gubbins on the fish. Oh no 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 no! Leave the gubbins. That's nice. And then no, but I then, meant scrape the gubbins off the bread onto the fish. Because it all sticks to the top of the bun, doesn't it? In a burger and a and that, no, you know, your take... sauce. Does it come with sauce with fillet of fish? Yeah, it's like a, it's it's like um, uh, what do you have with seafood? What is it? Tartar. When, yeah, it's like tartar sauce. Yeah, right. And then I'm going to take my chicken burger, put it in, and it'll be like a three burger thing. Oh, that sounds nice, doesn't it? You was making me hungry, boy. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, anyway, they're interrupted by Mandy, uh, and she says sorry to Curtin for his loss of his half-brother, as she lost a whole brother once. <laughs> yeah, that made me uh, He apologises, and she asks... She uh, He apologises. She asks him why. Harry McClary from... Do oh, yeah, so I'm, I missed that bit. Sorry. Um... Yeah, the old Harry McClary thing. So she goes on about how um, he used to. She used to read him books, uh, but yeah, was, she, was it something? She's it hopes he's in hell for all the things that he's done. He's done, yeah. <laughs> so that's really that's really ominous. Um, but then we get that now. Harry McClary is a famous children's book, right? So it's these, a dog, the, isn't it? these are the characters. Harry McClary from Donaldson's Dairy. Yeah. Mm hmm. Blitz and Maloney, all skinny and bony. Yeah. Yeah. Muffin McClay. Bundle of hay. Yeah. Bottomly pots, all covered in spots. Right. See, now, I, I don't I, know all the characters. I just know of the book. I can honestly say I, my kids never read it. I never read it to them. I didn't even realise it was a book. I thought that they it was some fantastic writing and they came up with these amazing character <laughs> names. Um, and also, Hercules Morse, Big as a Horse, was there. So... These were written by New Zealand author Dame Lindley Dodd and sold over 5 million copies worldwide. Yeah. They were huge. They were always... I can remember them seeing them in the bookshops and that when the kids were little when I used to let them say, go, you know, your book day, go and pick your book. They never ever picked that one up for some reason, but well, yeah, I remember it. I, I know of people that have read it. 
Well, I think I might give it a go. <laughs> I'm sure it's in your capabilities. I think it is. It might well be the only one that's in my capabilities when it comes to reading books. Um, but then we get a nice little AS- ASMR moment with uh, Kerry breathing because um, her fight or flight kicked in. I think my fight or flight's kicked in. Oh, really? Yeah. That's what I just said. There you go. Mm. <laughs> fight or flight. So now, Kerry and Curtin are at Kerry's house. Curtin has a box of videos. Uh, kids, you'll have to just um, Google video cassette recorder. Do you still have a video player? I don't, no. I think I'm uh, I think my mum and dad still do. Right. Um, but no, I haven't had one for... I, don't, I haven't even got any videos. I think... I, no, tell a lie. I think I've got Indiana Jones trilogy on video, and I've got a set of the original... Star, Star Wars. Wars on video. Yeah, I've got two lots of Star Wars. I've got the uh, limited edition box that they did. What yeah. other videos? I've got a few. I've got some home videos still. <laughs> Have you? But yeah, Have just you? family stuff that I've always wanted to get converted over to DVD, but never have. No. I ha- I'll tell you what, I tell you, what, I have got some of the, well, like, we used to have the sharp camcorder. Yeah. Some of the little tapes. Yeah. Of, of when we went to. Um, Disneyland, Disney World in 2008, whatever it was. So I'm like, oh, I must look at them again. Let's yell. Yeah, no, I've got the camcorder and everything. Yeah. Oh, that'd be crazy. I've still got footage of my kids that from when they were little. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah, it's something worth looking at, definitely. Anyway, Curtin wants to know Ray better. And this is a video of Ray's 40th birthday party for the millennium. So he hears Sue's voice. Now, Sue's voice is not as shouty. It's not as croaky and shouty, but then she's no. younger, isn't she? Yeah, and I, I get the feeling that she's also probably a lot slimmer. Yeah, because you see up, her she, feet, she, don't Yeah, you? She's up, we see her spam feet. She's up on her feet. We can hear Martin saying, I'm going to need my deposit from Radio Rentals. And again, kids, imagine this, right? Imagine you're sat watching your favourite TV programme, and then all of a sudden your television turns off, and you have to scramble and find 50p to put in the back of the telly, and then you put it in this slot and wind it up, and it gives you more time to watch your TV. <coughs> That's what we have to, used to have to do back in the old days. There were those TVs, absolutely. That was more of a 90s thing, though, wasn't it? Than into but the I, I can't remember. That That was how you rented the TV. That wasn't an electric thing, wasn't it? It was how you rented your TV, I think. It's so it? you made your payments. Yeah. Crazy. Isn't it? And there was the other rental place. Can you remember what they were called? It was uh, Radio Rentals, and they were always in competition. Uh, go on. Rumbelows. Rumbelows, of course. What a name, but... Oh, my Lord. I actually rented a TV when I first got a job. I rented a TV and a video. Yeah, it was a video because DVDs weren't out. Oh, have you got a video? <laughs> <laughs> From Siren Sister. So I only had my own video and TV in my bedroom. Yeah. I, I can remember when DVD first came out and my brother had the DVD and he had Jaws on DVD. And I can remember watching it from and thinking, oh my God, that looks amazing. Mm. You know, it's the same as when a mate of mine um, got the very first PlayStation. And I can remember watching the, like FIFA, whatever it was then. FIFA. Yeah, blown oh, away. Yeah. I'm thinking, oh my God, that is, and this is 20 years ago. Mm. And thinking, oh my God, that is so lifelike. And if you look at the first FIFA now compared to what it is now, it's a completely different thing. It's crazy. It is absolutely it is, crazy. Yeah. Technology has moved on. God, don't we sound like a couple of old full I sound like yeah. an old fart, no. <laughs> no, we are. Yeah. That's the problem. So we see Monica and Chandler, the goldfish. Yeah. And we scan through the party and see Trish and Rick, amongst others. And then the camera pans to Martin, slick back hair but bold in, a goatee, playing a ringtone from his 2000s mobile phone. Um, and here we go. So let me paint you a picture with mobile phones, kids. <laughs> we used to play games like Snake. Yeah. On our well, Nokia, I didn't even have a phone then. On our Nokia 3210. But what got me is like with phones, welcome to being old pricks by Papo and Neil. <laughs> the phones seemed to, like, to get as small as you could get. 
because there were never there weren't screens on your phones to start no. with, were they? And I can remember the Nokia was at eighty two ten. It was literally like five inches tall. Mm. And I can remember a mate of mine having one. I remember him, like, he picked me up from somewhere once and he said, I'll phone your missus. So I phoned her and I was shouting at the top of my voice because I thought there's no way <laughs> if I put it, if I put it by my ear, it was literally coming down to the side of my cheek. Mm. I thought there's no way she's going to hear me. So I'm going to, and my missus going, what are you shouting for? I said, so you can hear me because there was no way I thought that she, and it was crazy because it was such a tiny little phone. Mm. And now yeah, I didn't have one. I didn't have a phone talk. I was quite late to the party. I crazy. really was. But again, that was what, 20 years ago? And you look right. at where where phones have got from there to there. Now. To there. You, Do you live- find, though, even though it's 20 years ago, which is a long time, it still feels like yesterday? Oh, without a doubt. I keep thinking like the 90s was only like, oh, it's only... It was only a few years ago. <laughs> and it's not. It's like 20 years plus. It's crazy. Well, the, exactly. The 90s, so, to me, seems like, doesn't seem like it was 20 or, say, 30 years from the start mm. of the 90s. That's crazy. Mm. That is more than half my life. That's crazy. Anyway, let's get on to something else, because it's time to yeah. really... <laughs> <laughs> You're bringing yourself down. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, we see a younger Kerry and Curtin glued to the TV playing Crash Bandicoot on the PlayStation. Mm. Martin is dancing to his phone's ringtone like he's a DJ. He's holding it up in the air and, and sort of shaking his body to and fro like he's in charge of the party disco. Um, Curtin questions where Ray is. The camera pans to Ray, stood in the kitchen on his own in his Mitsubishi overalls. He glances solemnly to the camera as Sue shouts if Ray's having a good birthday. Uh, Curtin then rewinds the video and pauses on Ray's glance to camera. There is a... That is haunting. Yeah. His own 40th birthday party on his own. A ghost at his own feast. They were right about him always wearing his overalls, though. Yeah. How sad is that? It is very sad, but let's go back to when we had Simon on the podcast who tried to fool us all that that was Mackenzie Crook. Yeah, and there is a video. If you put in Curtin's half-brother on Google, there is a um, uh, like an offset picture of Curtin next to the guy that plays... Uh, Ray, and it is definitely not Mackenzie Crook. No. They're no, just trickster, it's not. trickster tricksters. That's what they are. They like to keep the intrigue. Indeed. So back to book club, and the vicar introduces Big Mandy to the group. Kerry doesn't look sure. The vicar asks the group about this week's book, The Jungle Book, and asks Kaylee what she thought. Um, uh, asks Kaylee what she thought. Beautifully played by Celeste String. She goes on to say... Yes, Kaylee. I think identity plays a big part in this world and the nature nurture debate. Because I think Mowgli struggles with his sense of belonging in the two worlds. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way she goes. No. And I love the fact that, that Kerry is like really looking at, at, at Kaylee and like shaking her head like she completely understands I don't think she understands what nature versus nurture means or anything but she looks so engrossed in it yeah she's found a happy place she Ke- has Kerry has once found something that she enjoys and you can see it slowly being taken away from her again. yeah yeah um Kaylee carries on and making another point about Mowgli's belongings uh, belonging, <laughs> Mowgli's belongings. <laughs> that he just is like pants, yeah, right? Yeah, his pants uh, and his stick. Yeah, Mandy shuts her down with "That's wrong," and the uh, the vicar's talking head. He always says it's good to have new members of the book club, as it as it adds new perspectives and creates good, healthy debate. I don't know about the rest of you. I think I would love to be friends with Baloo. He's that big brother you always wanted, isn't he? He's not the big brother I wanted. He's well. an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, we'd all love a Baloo in our life, surely. Well, I always get the feeling that I'm your Baloo. <laughs> well, yeah, you are. <laughs> I am just a big bear. 
you are a world be careful. In more ways, <laughs> in more ways, than, <laughs> in more ways than one, probably. Uh, so Gary get, Kerry gets to choose the next book, which is the Goosebumps book. Piano lessons can be murder. She is genuinely excited about the book. Um, it says that well, you don't want to be reading this book if you're going to be taking piano lessons anytime soon. Mandy says why? You know, you'll find out when you read the book, Mandy. I'm not going to read it, she says. So Kerry tells everyone the plot of the book, and then Mandy replies that she would have probably read it if Kerry hadn't ruined the book for her. Well done. Um, a bit obvious. That did make me laugh. That a bit, bit yeah. obvious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then we get uh, the usual text where it says a decade of financial austerity has seen vast reductions in the number of clubs and societies available to young people. This means that there is more pressure than ever on local volunteer led groups to bring the community together. Kerry is now at the vicar's office and Kerry asks the vicar how he thought book club went. Vicar knows what Kerry is getting at and Kerry describes Mandy at book club as an atomic bomb going off and that she has to comfort Kerry uh, sorry, Kaylee, who was in tears. She declares that her and Kaylee are leaving book club and it's either them or Mandy. The vicar says that he will... Oh, go on. I was just going to say, you were actually seeing a bit of fighting spirit from Kerry. She's just not sitting back. She's no. actually putting up a fight for something and, she wants. And she's also putting up a fight for Kaylee. Yeah. She's sort of looking after Kaylee. Yeah. Um, Vicar says that he will talk to Mandy. Kerry tells Vic Vicar what he needs to say to her, basically that she needs mental health and is banned from book club. Hold on one second, please. Can I speak? Book club is for everyone. Yeah, and that's the way not, it's going to nuts. remain. <laughs> <laughs> not nuts <laughs> exactly um, exactly we'd all be terrified if mandy turned up to your club exactly. i know i bloody would be but then you would also you wouldn't be have balls enough to tell her not to turn up no no you'd sit there and not say a word no and then complain about it all afterwards that'd be the thing absolutely just, that's the british yeah. way <laughs> yeah yes it is <laughs> kerry agrees to trust the vicar the vicar thanks kerry for her patience and she says well i have been patient Vicar, as always, has faith in people and believes in time Mandy will be a very valid contributor. Back at Kerry's kitchen, Kerry is reading Goosebumps. Goosebumps? Goosebumps. <laughs> Love it. Goosebumps. <laughs> Kerry is reading Goosebumps. Goosebumps? <laughs> While Curtin aimlessly opens and closes a kitchen drawer, clanking around. Kerry tells him to stop and asks if he's all right. Curtin wishes that he had one anecdote of Ray, something that meant he has some meaning in the world. Kerry offers to ask Sue if she has any stories to offer. Kerry asks Sue anyway, because Curtin says, no, don't bring her into it. Sue eventually realizes who she's talking about. And uh, this is uh, her words of wisdom on this. I can't tell Harry. All right, man. He was Okay, enough. Enough, please. <laughs> the poor look on Curtin's face. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he knows yeah. that he's, he's, he's fighting a losing battle in trying to find one, and no pun intended, one nugget of something that was, like, interesting about this man. I know. It's quite harsh on him, really, isn't it? It's Kurt. And he's trying to find out about his own brother and nobody likes him. No. Surely well, in the I world, somebody must have. I don't think it's that nobody likes him. It's just nobody has even, like, recognised that he existed. There's no interaction, is there? Nobody's yeah. interacted with nobody him. He's has, just been a yeah. person on the sideline. Yeah, nobody has anything of note to say about him. God, you I know, hope we don't go down like that, path. I, I, that's what I'm thinking. That's what oh. I think when you get to a certain age, you do look back and I, I've done it. I've done it this week. I've been looking at myself thinking, you know, if I, I don't mean to sound morbid, but like a bit, it's a wonderful life. Like if I wasn't here, would anybody really care? Do you know what I mean? It's that because it, I think this going through this episode, it makes you ask that question of what it is that you've mm. left in this, and it's a very serious, I don't want to get serious, but what, <laughs> but what you've left in this world, that when you're gone, in like a year's time, 
would anybody you know because people you get on with life you have to well life know. doesn't stop moving does no. it for anyone not famous not for anyone no I nearly broke out into song when you were talking about, oh, why are we here <laughs> <laughs> what's life all about but it, yeah you're quite right it, life doesn't stop for anyone so just whoever you are grab it by both horns and just enjoy yourself enjoy yeah. yourself yeah and even in a- such shit times there's no need to be down in the dumps about it enjoy it and have as much devil semen as you like. <laughs> yes, yeah, swallow it all. <laughs> so, Gargle it if you all must. All right, okay, okay. So back to book club. And the vicar congratulates Kerry's choice of book, uh, Gus Bumps. And yes. is about to ask everyone's opinion, just as Mandy cuts in. She seems quite well-spoken for Mandy and asks if it would be okay, you know, uh, in, uh, as she's been inspired and wonders if it would be okay for her to read a story that she has written. Murder in the Cupboard by Mandy Harris. Kerry looks desperate and tries to get the vicar's attention by sort of like touching his arm or touching his hand. And you can see that he's trying to, he has that sort of glaze over his Mm. eyes of like, I know what she's trying to do. I need to try and be like, not react. I just need to keep going. Uh, Kerry and Kaylee look uneasy as we hear Mandy's story of Sarah, uh, a cupboard, a jacket and a dog that gets put down. Now, uh, let me see. Is it this one? Uh, Mandy asks if anyone was surprised by the massive twist in the story. (laughs) Was any of you surprised when the murder in the cupboard turned out to be a suit jacket? Because I was, and I was the one that wrote it. (laughs) It's the way she talks there, Ashley talks. It's almost childlike. Because I was. Yeah, but it's like she almost is... She is trying to go that next level. She's not being obnoxious. She's not being horrible. Uh, she, again, has obviously taken an interest in it because she's, yeah. even though it's not really a story, she's, it's something that she obviously enjoys doing. Yeah, kind of therapy for her, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we're at Curtin's bedroom. Auntie Sheila has sent Curtin Ray's diary and Curtin is flabbergasted. Every entry is Mitsubishi. Can I ask a question? Oh. oh. I was just going to say, before you press play, Auntie Sheila. Everybody I know has an Auntie Sheila. I've even got an Auntie Sheila. Have you got an Auntie Sheila? No. Ah, curses. You broke my chain. I'm sorry. I haven't Uh, got an Auntie Sheila, no. And not that uh, I know of. Well, not that I know of, anyway. I've met so many people that, and everybody's had Auntie Sheila's. It's like a running... I mean, only Sheila's become aunties, do they? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, well, not all of them. No. Like, well, no, no, I'm sorry about that. No, I haven't got an anti Sheila. Oh, broken sorry. my chain. No, sorry, carry man. on. Carry anyway. On. Monday, Mitsubishi. Tuesday, Mitsubishi. Wednesday, Mitsubishi. Thursday, Mitsubishi. I, I give up. I mean, a man's life was just Mitsubishi, and I've just got to accept it. <laughs> but it's the fact that Curtin sat and read the whole bloody thing. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, it goes again with what we're saying. Is that the guy? I mean, it would be interesting to know whether Ray liked his life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If he did, then I got no qualms with it. You can't. You can't criticize somebody that is happy with their life, even if their life is going to work every day, coming home, going to work every day. If that's what their life is and they end up happy, you can't, you can't criticize them for that. No, you can't. You know? Yep. Oh, it's getting very deep, isn't it? Mm. Deep. Deep. Curtin says he gives up as Ray's life was Mitsubishi and that's it. He called Mitsubishi to see if they would name their next car after Ray, but they said no, absolutely not, but would fund a memorial bench and Clive would come and do an unveiling ceremony. (laughs) So Kerry, Curtin and the vicar and Clive stood at the bench. Clive peels off a sticker from the plaque on the bench that reads, Ray Mucklow worked at Mitsubishi 1977 to 2019. Curtin is worried that it looks like a retirement bench. Kerry agrees. As always, the vicar looks at the positive side and says it certainly is a lovely view of the cricket pitch. They have a moment of reflection, but only a brief moment, as the vicar points out that how poignant it is that Mitsubishi is pulling into the car park. Clive comes on and says the vicar says the vicar it's not, it's a Honda Civic Type R, uh, but can see why the vicar uh, would think that it's a Mitsubishi. Looks a lot luck at lot. Looks a lot like a Mevo. Was that right? Um, uh, Evo. Evo. 
Was it an Evo? Was yeah, it? Evo, yeah. Oh, okay. So as Kerry and Vicar and, the, and Clive are now distracted into the discussion of sat-navs, Waze, and Google Maps, Curtin stares at Ray's bench in disbelief that one simple comment and... Like in life, Ray is forgotten. It didn't. It took him nothing to just switch Change. from thinking of Ray to thinking of something as banal as like ways. Charlie did the classic, which I always hark back to the Phoenix Knights bit, where he asked for ketchup, and the, he stood in the chip shop, like pointing and keep pointing. He did it with the um, bench, where he keeps looking at the bench. And yeah, then. yeah. It's uh, just comedy genius. Those sort of moments. Yeah, Curtin- go on forever. <laughs> as Cur- far as I'm. Curtain brings the Satnav gang back round with a loud and purposeful rest in peace, Ray. And everybody turns back to the bench. Retrospectively, there is another poignant pause before Kerry asks whether Waze alerts you to speed cameras. Then in a split second, everyone bar Curtain is back chatting about Waze. Uh, Curtin, have you got Waze? I didn't know it was such a thing until no, I'd watched I, this. I did have Waze back when The Force Awakens came out. Right. I think, what was it? It might No, maybe Last Jedi. Because there was a thing where you had to, if you drove around, well, if you looked at the map, there would be things like Stormtroopers' heads or BB-8. And if you drove through them, you got points. Oh, I see. So you just follow the map and stuff. So, But I've never used it for any other reason. Uh, Curtin walks off in disgust. Kerry said, oh, he's, he's more of a Google Maps man. <laughs> and the vicar says he's a bit overall. It's understandable. And then Clive, give it a year and everyone will be using Waze. If you look at it, there isn't no reason why Clive isn't just as much of a dull person as Ray was. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I thought exactly that when you heard him talk. He's a nerd. He's a, yeah, he's a bore. Yeah. So when he dies, who knows who's going to be going to his funeral? I doubt Kerry and Curtin will. No, no. So back at the vicar's office, the vicar is phoning Mandy and they decide to have a one-on-one creative writing forum. Harold has smashed into Tom's head on his dodgem, which served Harold right for shagging Tom's wife while Harold was away doing catering for the RAF. (laughs) Tom was absolutely furious and got out and started banging the shit out of Harold's dodgem with his mallet, but that only made Harold angrier. Harold drove his dodgem straight at Tom and took his legs clean off and then reversed over his arms and crushed them into bits too so Tom was just like a fat sack of potatoes with no arms or legs, just a head and a pair of bollocks hanging off the bottom. The end. (laughs) There's BBC's new high gritty drama. Yeah, but if you look at the vicar's face there... You can see. You can see they go cut. And then he just pisses himself laughing yeah. because they both said when we spoke to them, Ashley and Paul both said that that was like really hard to film and they didn't imagine nothing. it was. Well, I can did, really I mean, imagine with some of the, the stuff that they've got that, that, that Ashley is saying, it's just ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah. So that basically is it. That's episode four of uh, this country series three. Kerry, uh, sorry, Curtin's half brother, um, and another great. Uh, I must admit, when I first watched the this episode, this was my least favourite one of the series. Yeah, it took me a while to appreciate this one. This but, one's got yeah, yeah. I still don't know whether it's it's a great episode. I don't think there is a duff episode. I'll be honest in the whole series. Otherwise, I wouldn't be sat here doing the podcast. But it's still. I'm still not sure it's up there with my favourites. Right. But as this as as you go through it, I think this episode was a lot funnier than I originally you, thought. Yeah, you you miss too much. There's too much going on. When the first time you watch it, you miss a lot of the comedy. Yeah, it takes that second, third watch to realise exactly what's going on. But it's still a great episode, and and Ashley, I think, steals it on this one. I really do. You almost see a gentle side of Ashley the way she's reading that story. There, all right, the story is super aggressive and violent, but her voice. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's something that she really likes doing. She really yeah. loves doing it. I'd go to Mandy's book club. I bet you would. <laughs> I bet you would. Um, I'd be shit scared, but yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> but that's it. So that's it for another episode. Well, what a great one it's been. Indeed. So. um uh 
it just leaves us neil say your bits and pieces absolutely you can find us on all the social media sites under uh, this country pod so it is this country pod on all the social medias you can email us if you've got any questions or you'd like to ask us something or even just pick our brains at wtaf this country at hotmail.com likewise we have a website with everything on there including a link to get your tickets for our final live show next may and that is wtaf podcast dot com beautifully done neil and also patreon you can now become a patreon peeper that's right for one pound a month you can just be a normal everyday peeper for three pounds a month sorry no for two pounds a month you can be a dirty peeper and for five pounds a month you can be a peeper supreme if you go to patreon.com forward slash wtaf you better see all the details of all the lovely rewards that you can get and also not only will you get access to our brand new show this country this week which you uh, is out every wednesday isn't it neil it is it certainly is it will yeah. be out um after recording uh, every wednesday every wednesday evening you can delight in, in what we have to talk about indeed and also you can be entered then into our monthly prize draw this month we are giving away uh, a set of autographs uh, of Kerry, Curtin, Len, uh, the Vicar, Big Mandy, Lugs. Martin Mucklow, and also Slugs. Yes, mm. the wonderful Michael Sleggs uh, signed a loads of cards for us way back when. Um, so we've got some of those. So you can be very lucky and win a whole set of all of those autographs. All you have to do is be a peeper. That's all you've got to do. A peeper with us. Don't be yeah. a peeper when you get arrested for being a peeper. Be a peeper with us. A um, Patreon peeper. A Patreon peeper. Come and sign up. Patreon.com forward slash WTAF uh, to come and sign up. That's all you got to do. Um, and also subscribe and rate the podcast, please. Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Amazon, <coughs> Castbox. Excuse me. <coughs> you right down there i'm all right i'm all right self-isolate self-isolate and also a big thanks to at mac kenny art for the uh, cartoon uh, versions of kerry and curtain that you see on our patreon uh just go and find him on all your socials at mac kenny art uh that's it thank you very much neil thank you very much pav so the next recap will be episode five the station uh which will be coming up very soon sometime soon sometime probably before christmas i'm pretty sure and that'll do thank you very much neil thank you very much pal thank you very much for listening and go and get plumbed you fuckers scarecrow festival is like the most important day of the year <laughs> daft cow this is just ridiculous what the actual fuck